Hello. So we're back. And uh yeah, we're going into Churchill. Basically right now we're repositioning. So yeah, basically, um, what I'm working on right now is the Churchill the Seventh. Um, now I'm mainly a medium player, so when I got into this, when I got into this line, these are like really tough heavies. I was super surprised by how much damage I could block in the tank, like just big amounts of damage you just block. And uh, a lot of the next couple replays will be me playing in a heavy tank, which is rare because I'm a medium tank player. Alright. So as of right now, we have 500 damage, 720 blocked. I'm like 1v3 right now. That's over a thousand blocked. And our KV2 is AFK. <laughs> I'm bouncing from the back, which is pretty insane. At this moment, I knew I had to act. I had to take care of him. AMX is really hurting me right now, but I had to take care of my front first before turning back. AMX is scared a bit. I maneuver to hit him. Now driving backwards is not a good idea usually, but uh... Yeah, this game was just an example of how I held the line, how a heavy like me held the line. And it allowed my other uh, teammates, the mediums and lights, to take care of the other tanks without having interruption from these three. So, three were all just focused on me, which was pretty great. And we won it with AFK, with an AFK uh, tank hunter team also, so it was a pretty good game. No, I'm not an expert in heavy tanks at all. I don't play them a lot, so these will mostly be just like how you can use a heavy tank to front line and to just take as much damage and hits and attention from your other teammates. So your other teammates, the mediums, the lights, could go around and flank and do stuff. It's like normally in a game, either the heavies don't do the job or the mediums don't do the job. But if they both do the job, your team usually wins. Or it's really close. So in this one, you see the medium skirt going over there. And I'm gonna try to just take as much attention away from them. So I'm gonna attract the attention of these other heavies. And take them out. Angling up a little bit right now. Angling up. This tank is awesome when you angle it. You just get so many bounces. It's unreal. And the one before it, the tier, the tier five, is also really good. I actually like the tier 5 better than the tier 6. Um, I don't think I have 
any replays of the tier 5 though. Of the normal church hell. The first. I just have uh, church hell 5th. I just have church hell the 7th. Replays. But. Now I'm not a heavy tank player. So I got rid of these tanks after I got through them. Um, it's just not me. I like. I like. To be able to carry a game, you can't really carry in this tank. You can only, if you have really bad mediums and lights, you're pretty much screwed. No matter what you do, so and that's pretty much any heavy tank though. So relies on the mediums, lights. At this point, I see what's happening to my team, and I decide to push, or I will soon push. Um, if I would be able to go back, I would have pushed right now. I wouldn't have waited a couple seconds like I did. Um, I would have definitely pushed. Because at this point, you need to take care of those before the other ones come around. So I, I should have pushed automatically. I didn't though. That was my mistake. So at this point I decide to push, but it's a bit too late. I should have pushed a lot earlier. Because they're already behind me, there's one in front of me, I can't do anything with that. It's over. That was still a really good game though, 2000 damage and 3000 blocked in a tier 6. That's insane. 3000 blocked in a tier 6 is an amazing, amazing feat. So we're back in a new battle. And I am platooning with an SU-85, tier five, which is a tier 5 Russian TB. Like I said, um, I don't play heavy, so some of these maneuvers might not be the best plays for a heavy, but as I never really ever played a lot of heavies, this is what I thought was the best. So right here I angle myself for the KV to be able to shoot me, while also getting the flag, capturing B. I don't know why I did that. Um, I think the reason I did that is I saw what was happening to our mediums and I wanted to really help them out and push. I think that was my reasoning for, for leaving the But anyway, it was a second, I only had to wait a second, so I probably should have waited, but I needed to. I saw what was happening to our meds and I wanted to help them out. As much as I could. And my platoon 
grenades. He took care of that TD back there, which is good. Now this isn't going to be a game like the other ones where I blocked a lot of them. So this is more like I did my part. I did my part as a heavy, which is good. And it looks like I took no damage. So I took no damage this game. It's pretty good. But yeah, that's just another thing I want to say. When when any of you guys are playing in heavies, you frontline that heavy. Alright? Don't snipe in the back. That will even if you can do more damage that way, it will mess up your team. Just don't do that. Frontline, please. Now we're in a new game. Also with the Churchill, the seventh. I'm going the heavy route up here. So at this point what I'm doing is I'm angling up a little bit. Front lining as a heavy should be doing. Front lining and distracting the other tanks. Targeting the M6 at the moment. And yeah, this tank is an excellent bouncer. This thing angled, it bounces so many shots. I've never played in a tank that can bounce so much. If you just want to have fun and bounce a lot of shots, this is the tank for you. VK are really doing our jobs here. I just tracked that tank. Bounce another. We're at 1,500 bounced. It's good. So this game was another example of how I took the attention of me and the heavies took attention of most of their team, while our mediums could do damage from flank in other positions. Another game where the front line position worked. Now we're in a different tank. We are in the Lago. This is the tier four European line tank, medium tank. And we're on mines. We're gonna go up the hill. We 
Now that was a very risky move, but I'm pretty sure I did it because I saw that there weren't too many TVs and they weren't focused on me. But they sure are now. They sure are now. Two M7s looking right at me. I should have never stopped there. Uh, never stop while aiming. Unless you're in like a T or something, but besides that, don't stop while aiming. You'll get more bounces and more misses, and they'll miss more when you keep moving. At this point, um, I wanted to help my friend out here. He was a one shot. And then we started focusing on this guy, M7. Took him out. And we're gonna go and stop their cap. And again, like I said the last video, unless you're the winning team and you can't find the other person, don't base cap. It's the worst thing you could do. You're literally gonna make your team lose. Unless you're the winning team and can't find the air person because he's hiding, you don't base cap. It will screw you over. And it screwed them over because they decided, three of them decided to go in base cap. It's just not a good idea. Not a good idea. So I'm just going to go around, get them from behind. Ready on two kills. Indeed. Alright, three kills. Pretty good game. Second class. And we are back. We are back in the Churchill the Seventh. <laughs> that was a little break from the Churchill the Seventh. Didn't want to have too many of them. And now we're back to being slow and blocking shots and angling. And then actually with my uh, platoon, I'm in a platoon with a VK 30.01D which as of right now when I'm making this video I'm actually working on that tank and playing that tank stock is really bad it sucks it's bad medium once you get all the engines and everything it's doable it's not the best but you can make it work I play a lot of games with uh, this person that I'm platooning with right now. He's in my clan too, so. So in this one, I'm just using this ridge line here. Uh, not really sure, this concrete thing really helped me block more shots than normal. And it's working. They're just feeding me hit points. Like, if you're a medium, don't try to hit point trade with a heavy like that. It's just not gonna work. Go around, find a way to hit them without them being able to hit you. Or at least when they're not looking, I guess. It's a big mistake a lot of medium players do. So finally took care of that TD. And by the way, I am using fuel on all the times I play the Churchill Ascent because it is this one of the slowest tanks I've ever played. 
And it's a good thing it's slow because it has so much armor. But I need that fuel. Without that fuel, it would be terribly slow. It already is terribly slow, but it would be even worse. So that's why I use the fuel always. A little expensive, but you can make it work. Alright. I try to hit his hatch. But I should have known better. This is a heavy tank. It doesn't have that good of an accuracy. But good to try. At this point, it's a 3v5. So not looking too good for our team. Not looking too good at all. And see, at this point, I knew that I had to. I had to push. Or we were going to lose. Even if I pushed, it's bad chances. Got tracked. Fixed it. I really need to take care of this one. I need to help my platoon mate back there. That's why I'm pushing also. I need to take care of him as quick as I can. Okay. Now me and my platoon are targeting the KV-13. Sorry, KV-1S, my bad. And now, we changed it from a 3v5 to a 3v2. And yeah, he's running. That guy rammed, not the smartest idea. And then the Y5 is AFK. So they almost won with an AFK player. But we brought it back. It's pretty good. Yeah, I don't know what my idea was there about doing that. Shouldn't have attempted that. It's fine. Took him out. Five kills in total. Three kills me and two kills the other person in my platoon. It's a pretty, pretty good game. Good comeback. Now we are on to mines again. I am aware that I might have too many Churchill the Sabbath videos on uh, in this video, games in this video, but I've just never been able to block this much damage. Uh, it's totally different than mediums. I still prefer mediums, but oh, that's me versing another Churchill the Seventh. As you can see, its armor is pretty solid. <laughs> But it gets tracked over and over and over and over again. See, they have hill, so they probably should have won this. But I didn't want to push them. Because that's what they want you to do when they have hill. But they were kind of impatient and they started pushing us. Which means they just gave away their advantage. At this point I see that He's trying to hit the hit us from behind. 
I try to get a shot at him. Also, he's flanking our right, but I'm focusing more on the P-43 at this moment. But he is flanking. Now at this point, that was a mistake. I should have probably focused him more, but I didn't. And at this point, um, I, I decided to turn my attention back to the frontliners over here. This other Churchill the Seventh wants to 1v1 another Churchill the Seventh. So, two Churchills 1v1ing each other. I track him. And I decide to go for the TD because he can do more damage. It's a tight game. I take out the Churchill Seventh, and that is the game. Three kills. Held my ground the whole game. And now, we're gonna change it up a little bit. We're back in my favorite tank of all time T23 E3. I love this tank. I don't play it as much um, as I used to, and that's just because I managed to get like a very cool stat on it where I had like 3.0 destruction ratio. It's pretty insane. I didn't want to lose that. So I just don't play it as much anymore. I played it recently and I haven't I didn't do too well in it, and that's just because I haven't been playing it. But um I'm still pretty good in it. This definitely still is though my favorite tank of all time. I have more t games in this tank than any other tank. It's just how much I play this tank. I used to play this tank. It was my only premium for the longest time. And I got it free out of the weekly crate. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm trying to take out their TDs and heavies. Uh, I took some really hard hits though. I probably should have checked if they were aimed at me before I did that. That was my fault. I just reset camo there. Um, and I'm just right now just looking at what they're doing. They're not looking at me so I can go and shoot them. So I took him out. Now I'm gonna go for that uh, heavy. So then all we have to worry about is their other initiative. He's dead. That's a uh, 5v4. And I know they're coming from that direction. So I'm just waiting for them to be spotted or have an idea of where they are. And at this point, I decide to flank. I shoot him and I keep on moving. And I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go left since I'm fast. And I'm going to help out and kill these heavy uh, and kill these guys over here to help my heavies. Now a Centurion 1 stock does almost no damage. I had to play through that stock and it was horrible. Absolutely horrible. Only one heavy left. I'm guessing he's over here. Which I was wrong. He's actually over there by their spawn. Don't know what exactly he was doing the whole game, but just where he is. And he's not AFK. He's not AFK. He's just, I don't know what he was doing. And see, that's another example. If you're a heavy, you frontline. You don't just stand in the back like that. Alright, that was the first class. And now we are back in the Churchill the Seventh. I promise you guys, there most likely won't be any Churchill the Seventh games in the next videos, commentary videos. This is the only 
snippet you're going to get of Churchill Descents in this whole series. And uh, just an update on the channel while we're waiting for this game to really kick in. Um, these commentary and analysis, the series is a limited series. Uh, it's not going to go on forever. Uh, I could definitely keep it going on forever. Because I get a ton of replays that I could share and put on here on different tanks while I'm grinding up lines. But I feel like I don't want to... If I take that direction of my channel, having just these commentary videos on Fridays and then Masteries on Mondays, um, I feel like having that indefinitely won't be the best for my channel, especially since not too many people are interested in these commentaries. Um, I really want to, and I also really want to, advertise my Mastery series, which is basically mastering my road to mastering every single tank that I have in the game which is a very hard thing to do and I'm, I, on my playlist I have a counter of how many tanks I own and how many of those I've mastered so far and of course in that mastery playlist there might be multiple masters of the same tank but it still will only count as the one out of the how many I own and I really want to start emphasizing that series so I might post two mastery vids a week instead of a mastery vid and a commentary vid. And also, another idea I have for the future is what I mastered a tank, that allows me to make a review video for that tank. Basically what that means is since I've mastered that tank, I know how to play that tank right. I mean, there's tanks... I know how to play right, but I haven't mastered yet. Like the Leopard, but that's a whole different story. Um, I had a lot of close ones on that. A lot of first classes. Not going to talk about that right now. That's for another video. But anyway, once I master a tank, that will allow me to make a review video just for that tank. Which I would have a specialized amount of battles that are like really good in that tank. Explaining everything about that tank. But that, that series is definitely into the future a little more. Um, yeah. So I'm definitely promising Mastery Mondays every Monday. Fridays, the definitely this series will go on, go on on Fridays, plus other commentary vids. Uh, for a while. But after a while, I might change it up and this series and make it more diverse. Because, do you really need a battles and explanations in every tank? And like these commentary things? I feel like these commentary things really just teach you how to play a certain style. So like meds, heavies, etc. But anyway, back into this game. Um, I haven't really talked much about it. Uh, not too much damage. A lot blocked though. 2,670 blocked. Uh, three kills. That's pretty good. Uh, I did something very interesting uh, that you normally wouldn't do in a heavy. Is I went kind of that like side route. Very risky, but it paid off. Um, yeah. And now I am in the Comet, which is actually one tier higher than the Cromwell from I think two videos ago. And this Comet's very similar to my T23E3. A lot of people like it more than the T23E3. I personally don't like it as much as the T23E3. That's just me. Very similar playstyle though. So right now I'm going around. And this video actually, we will not win this battle. But the reason why I chose this is because um, I kind of got impatient this game and I rushed towards the end. Which was not a good idea. But I got really, really lucky. Like, really lucky. You'll see what I'm talking about. This is more of like a funny video than anything. Right. I caught him on fire.
So at this point, I should have just start shooting them and backing up. But I decide to, as you will see, I decide to push. Now I'm a one shot now. And I see him rushing, right? So at this point I was like, yeah, you know what? Yep, I, I got a Amharak, which is pretty sick. Uh, you're welcome, team. And I bounced 640 damage. Which is just an insane amount of damage to just block after a uh, after an Amorak. I thought that was like really funny. Um, so now we're in the T233. And I'm going this route. Which is not a popular route for mediums. Normally you don't go in the middle like this, but I am. And I'm trying to catch them here. And I don't see them until now. Basically what I do here, they're all camping on this hill, right? And all of them right now are focused on me in a way. Um, this battle won't, ha won't be high damage. What I wanted to emphasize here is I spotted basically their whole entire team, and now my team knows where to position themselves to do the damage needed. So, and that's also another thing. Don't clump up in this one area on this map, or anywhere. Don't really clump up anywhere, because that could really not be good for your team. And here I'm using my gun depression. To try to, I'm trying to bait them to come at me so I can shoot them. So I baited him and he died. He just got tired of waiting. He wanted me dead. It's not that easy to get me though. So at this point, the people on the hill are still looking at me and focused on me while I'm taking out their friends. So that's another thing. The more people you can focus on yourself, that takes away the possibility of your teammates getting damaged, which is a big thing to think about. And uh, game awareness plays a big factor in knowing how to do that. So at this point, I decide to just push up, because we won. And why did we win? We won because of the spot. My team knew where all of them were, basically. And they couldn't do anything about it.